Welcome to Robert Bellissimo at the Movies. This is a YouTube video podcast where we explore storytelling on film, as well as interviews with industry professionals who work in various aspects of the arts. And I want to welcome to the show, James, who has a fantastic YouTube channel called 20th and 21st Movies. James, welcome. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you, Robert. I, I appreciate the invite. It's awesome to be on here. I love your channel, love your content. So oh, thank I really you. do appreciate, uh, appreciate the invite and, and definitely look forward to talking about this incredible film. <laughs> me too. Me too. Um, before we jump into this film specifically, just on the, uh, uh, you know, this is a Fellini film. Uh, what are some Fellini favorites of yours? I know you have, you did a video on the box set, the Criterion that came out. Uh, do you have some favorites that pop out to you? The one that we're talking about tonight is definitely one of my top two favorites. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. La Note de, Ca de Cabiria and uh, a film that preceded it, La Strada, uh, yeah. two of my favorites. Uh, Eight and a Half, of course, is is amazing. Uh, Om Record's really good. I, I like a lot of his films. Um, I will say that I am, I consider myself a bit of a Fellini novice. So I've had a chance to go through this incredible box set. Oh which, yeah. Oof, it looks, man, this is one so of the best, good. this is one of the best <laughs> releases from Criterion. I mean, it is a treasure trove, trove of, yeah, of I uh, gotta cinematic get goodness. It is so good. Yeah. Um, so I had a chance to go through, but I feel like I've just scratched the surface of these films. You know, right. uh, I, I want to get deeper into Eight and a Half, and you know, Ju um, you know, Juliet and the Spirits, and Il Vitellone, and um, just all those wonderful, wonderful films, and just dive deeper into them. I had a chance to go through them all, you know, the White Sheik and all the and all of his films, but not to the level of real depth that I that I really want to get into to really know this filmmaker. And the more that I learn about Fellini and and about uh, the amazing Giulietta Messina, uh, the more I want to learn about him because they had an incredible journey together. So, yeah, no, absolutely. No, I, I know exactly what you mean, because, you know, I, every every great work of art offers so much more with with each repeat viewing. I know every time I've seen oh, yeah. His movies, I see so 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 you know so much more. And the great thing about a box set like that is then, you know, you got all those featurettes and you know the essay booklets inside. Oh and, yeah, uh, yeah, the books and the, you know the guide <laughs> to the films and and the essays. And I know just, it's it's, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. a lot of no, good stuff I mean, in there. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, so what is, how do you, you know, this being one of your, one of your favorites, um, you know, I mean, it, it, it it's about, you know, Kabiria, who's a, who is a prostitute. Uh, but yeah. do you, what do you, what do you think the, the, you know, the heart of the story is, is all about with, with this woman? You know, it's, it's so interesting, and, and, and this is a film that I, of course, in preparation for this talk, I revisited both La Strada and, and La Note de Cabiria, or Nice Cabiria, uh, this weekend, just to sort of, you know, let them kind of wash over me again, and I would say that her performance in this film, and in the film that preceded it, uh, and just how she embodies these characters, just is so powerful, you know, oh, it's yeah. like, it's the same yeah. actress, but it's two different, totally different characters. You look at Gelsamina in La Strada and uh, Kabiria in this film here, they're two totally different uh, women, you know, played by the same, you know, incredible actress, uh, but they have some similarities in that yeah. they both at the very heart, they, they desire, they want love, they want right. to be truly loved. and I don't think either of them ever gets that in these films, unfortunately. But I think for me, you know, what really strikes me about, you know, Kabiria is her performance and just the, the the power of the character, the world that Fellini puts you in. You know, um, they're basically, you know, of course, prostitutes, they're, you know, in Rome, they're sort of the lower end of society and they're sort of the forgotten people. And you sort of empathize with people like that, you know, people yeah. who are, uh, you know, taken advantage of and uh, sort of marginalized and sort yeah. of cast aside as being uh, considered of lower value, you know, which of course is not true because we're all equal, you know, of course. but of, uh, course. of course, 
uh, everybody doesn't see it that way, unfortunately. And, uh, and you see that, you know, based on the way that people treat each other uh, mm -hmm. in these films. But I just think the film is just incredibly beautiful. Her performance is amazing. I love the supporting characters around her. Wanda yeah. is a wonderful supporting character. Oh, I love her. Um, yeah. The best friend, it, her best friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, and, and she's a good friend and just it, it the, uh, the ending with them together, you know, as she's leaving, it's oh, just, yeah. it's, it's, it's heartbreaking, you know, it really uh, is with they that truly black do tear love from her makeup, just that one does the tear going down yeah. her cheek. Um, yeah. No, yeah. I know it's uh, sorry. Were you gonna say something? Yeah, yeah. I was just saying. I mean, I think for me, it just touches you at the, at the core. You, you oh, just yeah. see her journey, and you just and and throughout the journey, you know that these men are ultimately up to no good. You know that they're not gonna do right by her. And, right. And right. Uh, you know, it's it's just uh, amazing. You know. Yeah. No, I to I totally agree. And what what I what I like so much about this film and it. It it reminded me of La Dolce Vita in a sense because he he it, they're like these series of episodes. I mean, there's there's yeah. no real which La Dolce Vita is very very similar, and so there's there's no real uh, plot. It's all about this woman, and as you said, as mm -hmm. you put very well, and her quest. You know, she's she's living in a lot of pain because she doesn't she lacks love and she lacks relationships and the things that uh, she wants, and and also she's she's treated. Uh, so badly by oh, uh, yes. by 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 strangers. I mean, and 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 people who, you, you know, who have been taking advantage of her. Um, but you know that that the it, we start the film off where you know you don't know anything about this woman, and she's with this man, and yeah. because it's it just seems like this romantic date and then before you yes. know it boom she gets pushed into the water it's taking and, her purse pushing her in the water <laughs> yeah yeah and then it's like you know it, it the film feels like it's one thing and then it goes like very very quickly yes and i love mm -hmm. movies that kind of look like it's going to be one thing and then they go in this opposite direction and yeah. what was fascinating to me about you know even when she's resuscitated and these people save her is that she's still you know she's she's just you, she's so desperate that she's she's looking for Giorgio, this guy Giorgio, who pushed her yeah. in the water. Still calling and, for him. Yeah. Yeah, calling for him. Not, you know, like and these other people are were just like, yeah, yeah, you know, go if that's what you know, if that's yeah. what you want. And she convinces herself that uh she must have fell and that he ran away scared. And you know, you mentioned yeah. Wanda is like, even though Wanda is like tough with her, she's a good friend because she's honest with her <laughs> to say, You hardly knew this guy. He didn't. You didn't fall. Yeah. You clearly, you clearly <laughs> only knew him for a month or whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the, you know, just this, the way they set it up, like it just, it, you know, tells you so much about, you know, this isn't just heartbreak. This is like, it's, it's much deeper. Like it is, it is a deep need. Like she is that, that, you know, you only find a, a couple of things out, out about her childhood that her parents um have been dead since she was a kid and she was basically a child prostitute but she still is that innocent girl who needs um mm -hmm. love and affection and it, and you know just the fact that she would couldn't even admit that someone tried to drown her uh yeah. because she's just trying to find Giorgio was yeah. was so um gut-wrenching to me oh, yeah. you know um well, yeah, it tells you a lot about her character. Yeah. I mean, and and the fact that, you know, if Giorgio, it, it, you know, she was calling for Giorgio, if he had actually appeared and came around the corner in that moment, she would have taken him back probably, you know, because yeah, exactly. she, was, she exactly. craved it so much and she would have forgiven him and, and yeah. she would have made all kinds of excuses for him. And, um, yeah. but, you know, it, it just showed a lot about just how deeply she needed and wanted uh, love, you yeah. know, and, uh, and just, you know, and I'm sure we'll get to it, that whole part with the magic show and the, you know, what that oh, revealed and how right. he was able to pull that out of her. I mean, just an incredibly deep uh, character that uh, is just so, so memorable. And I, I just, I want to see more of her work. Because um, I, 
I saw an interview, a couple of interviews with her, and she was talking about the different characters that she's that that, that she's done. And you know, I think she said that this character, Tiberia, was the most like her in real life. Oh, really? Which I thought was really interesting. Wow. You know, just being because you know Tiberia is you know very he- you know she desires love, but she's very headstrong. She's very proud as a property owner. And, you know, she's a very <laughs> strong that. character. I love the very pride about the house. <laughs> yeah. you know, she's a I mean, very that strong she character. Be. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Very, yeah. And, yeah. and she's a fighter and very different than like her, you know, Gelsamina and, 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 and Lestrada, you know, yeah. and just so, it's so, I would definitely recommend to anyone to sort of watch these two films together because they are just a great showcase of, of the range of this of this actress, you know. Oh, absolutely, so. and I I know that it w- it was also a a continuation of her character in the White Sheik, which was his yep. first the first film he directed on his own because he co directed yep. before that, uh, Variety Lights, and and you only mm-hmm. see her in one scene in that, and so it's it's basically that character, um, in this Kabiria. film, yep. yeah, Kabiria and. You know the 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 first episode you you really get you you get a strong feeling for her desperation and her pain and her need for love which which carries for, forward in the other ones but what I really liked about the second one with the movie star uh that she sees outside of the club and he's breaking up with his his girlfriend and then he calls her oh, over yeah. is is you really see also how much of an outsider she is you know, mm-hmm. just the fact that she was outside of this rich club, you see like the doorman shoo her away like she was like, you know, an animal, basically. Um, yeah. And and you see how, how angry she gets, like you get a strong impression that she's constantly treated that way. And yeah. as he as he invites her into his car and then they go to this like high end club, you see cat. Yeah. Yeah, you see the way she's looking at this place, like, oh my god, I'm I, like, she's never been in such a high end place before, and it's comical at the same time. I found because you know, here she is with that, you know, she's wearing different outfits throughout the film, but they're all, um, they have they have a a a, a real sense of of you know innocence about them, like with the, uh, it's very it's very Chaplin esque, you know, and and I mean yeah. this is this is resembles a lot of uh, City Lights. Uh, as Fellini yeah. says, it was a, a big inspiration. So, you know, the Tramp character always wears the same clothes. Yeah. So she's wearing different clothes, but they, they do have a clownish kind of uh, appearance about them or or something that w- is very run down, like she's wearing that ratty, you know, fur on her. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I really like that because they really pop and they contrast it so much with everyone else in that club who's with like, you know, high-end uh, clothes and diamonds and necklaces. And then when everyone's yeah. dancing, everyone's more reserved that she's like starting to do like a mumbo. <laughs> um, and it made me laugh and it broke my heart at the same time for her because it's just like these people are just making these judgments just because she's different or she looks different. And yeah, and so they think they're that. better than she is. And, you know. Yeah, exactly. And and uh, uh, so it was another side to her, you know, day to day reality and and then when she goes to uh his house you're you're not really quite sure what he wants from her like is it company like i i didn't get the impression that right. he was trying to just pick up a prostitute like i did you just think that he was up so upset and vulnerable about that fight with the with her with his girlfriend the breakup that he just wanted to be with someone it was it was strange yeah. i liked it but yeah. <laughs> yeah i did too it it was it was I, I'm still trying to process what exactly his intentions, you know, yeah. were. I, I think, yeah. um, I, and and I think, okay, if if the girlfriend didn't end up showing back up at the house, what would have happened? And I get the yeah. sense that they probably would have just had a, a nice evening together. Um, and my sense is is that it would probably just it would have, it would have probably been. At just a nice evening together, one night stand, and he would have sent her on, you know, yeah. um, un- until, you know, the girlfriend showed up, because that's basically what ended up happening. Um, he just, he, he sent her on, but, um, you know, the girlfriend showed up, and she's, poor thing, she's in the bathroom, oh, peeking God. through. Yeah, it's a POV is, shot of her looking through the, the key. Yeah, the point of view, yeah. and seeing everything that's going on, and then, yeah. 
you know, then, you know, the girlfriend's sleep, he brings her out and this, this scene where um, you see them in like a silhouette and he's like, you see like a shadow of them or something, a silhouette of them. Yeah. And he's giving her money and just sending her, okay, oh, go yeah. on, you know, go yeah. on. It was, that was very heartbreaking. You know, it, it was just another episode of, you know, her uh, being treated as someone of lesser value uh, by exactly. someone that, uh, someone that didn't deserve her, you know, quite honestly, you know, yeah. and, um, you know, and, and, you know, she as a person was better than that, but she didn't, you know, allow herself to be treated better than that, you know, by someone that was truly worthy of, you know, the love that she craved, you know? Uh, yeah, no, so. good. That's a good point. It's just a good example of looking for love in the wrong places, you know, and, and, oh, uh, yeah. but yeah, that, but, but that episode was, was uh just heartbreaking when the girlfriend showed up and wouldn't take no for an answer you know let me in yeah. i'm not going you know and uh, yeah. of course he had to let her in and you know but i think if she hadn't have showed up he would have probably he would have probably had a nice evening with Chel with uh with uh Kabiria and eventually sent her on the same way um at the end anyway yeah, that that that's what I thought. It's because, my guess. It's my guess. Yeah. yeah, we can only you know we we can only speculate. But um, what 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 I what I also liked about that episode was that um, Alberto was actually he I, I I I'm not familiar with him, but apparently he was he is a real like Italian star at that time. Um, yeah, he so, was named. I had a written at Amadeo Nazari. Yeah, he played Alberto Lazari. Yeah, so Lazari so played like, Lazari. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, Lazari <laughs> played Lazari. So it was, I guess, that was a bit of an in joke, uh, a take on his name. Yeah. And yeah. you know, he was rather cold and distant at first, and then when they got to the house, he started to become much warmer. So, uh, you know, we're seeing these different sides of this guy where we think, oh, he's not very nice. You know, he seems cold and detached, mm -hmm. and then he starts to warm up. He's signing autographs for her. He's giving her food, and then we think, oh, okay. You know, you know, this is uh this is this is an interesting guy that he would bring, you know, yeah. this rich, very wealthy movie star just bring, you know, brings this this woman home. You know, maybe he feels sorry for her if, or maybe he wants to help her. So we're getting all these different feelings yeah. and ideas about him. And then um, you know, I, I can I can I can understand, you know, that he was in a predicament because the girlfriend comes in, there sure enough, there he is with a with a pro with a prostitute. So he has to hide her, but you're right. I mean, yeah. she, she feels like she can't do anything about it. Like she, ha she has to stay in that bathroom all night. I mean, I think, yeah. you know, if it were me, I would have been like too bad, man, I'm out of here. I'm not, gonna <laughs> <laughs> I'm not staying here. And I, I imagine saw them yeah. having sex or heard them having sex. Cause you know, sure enough in the next yeah. morning, um, you know, she's, she's, I mean, maybe she, they just went to bed, but she's totally, his girlfriend's totally undressed. Right. So right. she certainly saw, you know, the reconciliation of some kind, but it's still, it's bad enough that she had to be in there. Um, oh, yeah. all night long, you know, oh, yeah. and he's got that great, you know, Fellini often does this. I recently uh, reviewed Ivi Talone and he has that in La Strada. Uh, it's either a POV shot or an objective shot here. It's a POV POV shot from, uh, Kabiria, as she looks at the girlfriend and the camera begins to pull back, right? And, and, and then it comes mm -hmm. back to her close up looking at her. And it's just that 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 feeling of envy. Like, like I took that as like she wishes it was her, you know, just like ah, again, that mm -hmm. That's a good back, way of looking at it, yeah. You know, did, did that pop out to you, that shot? I was curious. Uh, not that I can remember, but you definitely piqued my curiosity to go back and check that out. Um, yeah. And I can imagine based on what you're describing that, you know, she probably did wish she was in the girlfriend's shoes and wish that, so. wishes that that was her, you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I thought so. He, uh, he often had that shot. Like you, you mentioned La Strada, La Strada, like at the end when Anthony Quinn is leaving her again, yeah. also when someone's sleeping. And that again, he looks at her and it's a POV and it's, it's these people pulling away. Uh, he mm -hmm. even has that here later when she sells her house and everything to go with uh, Oscar, the guy towards the end. Uh, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, again, it's, it's that pulling away, like, let it, like, of, uh, and they're always just so devastating. The simplicity of a shot, like that just pulls yep. back. I love it. Yeah, I, I just it it you know it's amazing the power of the medium, right? That uh, 
Oh yeah. But you put these, you know, you edit some shots together and they can be uh, uh, so, so powerful. Uh, but yeah, that, that was probably, my, you know, one of my favorite, one of my favorite episodes of, uh, of, of the film. And I, I like, I like the interaction just amongst the other prostitutes and the street character she has, like yeah. she gets into this mm-hmm. big vicious fight with um, an older prostitute who's, you know, hitting at her insecurities about Giorgio. Um, but there is a sense of, there is a sense of community amongst them. There is a, like the, the, so. the, yeah. the, the night, the night crawlers, the night people. Uh, I, yeah. you know, I really think that Fellini was attracted to these people because he really loved them. I think he, he mm-hmm. was interested in people who lived outside of society. Uh, you see yeah. that right away with in variety lights, like with these with these street with these uh, theater performers who go from show to show, town to town, uh, yeah. and are and are making a living outside of the way most people do things. Um, and and this is obviously a you know a much more hard scrabble uh, view of oh, that. Yeah. And you know you think the 19, late nineteen late nineteen fifties to tell a film about an empathetic film about a prostitute. I mean, no one apparently wanted to do it. I mean, the De Laurentiis did it, Dino De Laurentiis. Um, that must have been hard to, and that, you know, that, that was quite brave, especially you think Italy is being very religious and Catholic. And um, of course that scene. And there's sorry. an element in, yeah, yeah there, and they touch on the, you know, religious aspect, you know, of things as well in this film as well, which is, I thought was fascinating. The whole scene, the church, you know, yes. and, you know, um, just praying for a better life, praying to, to oh, just do better, oh, yeah. if, you know, for forgiveness and, yeah. and, you know, just, I thought, I thought that was so very fascinating and interesting, just seeing the heart, you know, seeing her heart in that moment. And I'm not sure how religious she was, but um, she definitely, again, was seeking love, you know, from these other men. And of course, seeking love from, of course, God as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. and forgiveness and reconciliation with him and just, um, you, you know, wanting to be right, you know, with God, wanting to be right with man and her, her you know, the people around her. But, um, you know, just, you know, please help me live a better life, you know, yeah. was, and I'm not sure exactly, I, f- I forgot exactly how she put it, but it was, it, it just really struck me as like, wow, you know, that's, that's really powerful, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, she really, you know, begs God on I'm, I'm that was another really interesting episode where, you know, there's this uh, religious groups coming into town. And, and so everyone's there to make a make a wish. And again, like Fellini is such a great filmmaker that it's it's both tragic and somewhat funny at the same time, because he often, you know, either was poking fun at the church a little bit or uh uh well yeah often poking <laughs> yeah he was yeah. often often poking fun and i think here again it was it was that thing of like you know everyone everyone sort of naively believes that if they just make this one wish that like magic that the next day all their problems will be solved i mean you see the people going there like one guy can't even he can't walk and he, yeah. you know, he, he Put suddenly his crutches down. Yeah. He has this inspiration that he feels that he can suddenly walk and he lets go of the crutches and he falls. <laughs> so it's both like so terribly tragic and I feel guilty to laugh, but it is sort of like showing that, you know, and, and, and she uh, at first didn't want to go as she's sort of like, oh, I don't know if I believe in that. But I think, again, <laughs> it's that desperation that we saw in that first scene that just thought, you know what, I have to, I have to try. And so she's just begs again, the performance yeah. is incredible. And she, she literally begs for change. And then of course the next day she wakes up and everything's the same. And, and uh, uh, that, that anger that, ref, you know, she, she refuses to accept that things aren't going to get, aren't going to get any better. Immediately after that, she meets that man who's going around fe- like feeding like homeless people living in caves. Yes, in the caves. Yeah, I thought that was yeah. fascinating. Oh my yeah. goodness! And, oh, I love that. Know, yeah, I did. And you know, I I was thinking to myself, I think he might be the only man in the film who didn't take it. That's true. That's a good point. You know? I mean, he yeah. he you know he drove her around and he took her where she needed to be, and yeah, that was it. He didn't take any money from her. He didn't have any ulterior motives or anything. He. You know, he helped those people, including 
uh, one of the ladies used to be, I think, uh, a night worker as well. And, yeah. You know, she yeah, had, knew, of course, she knew her. Yeah. She and knew who she media, was. Yeah. And, and uh, I thought that was interesting. And uh, just how he was helping the people in the caves and just seemed, seemed to be a good man, you know? Yeah. Um, at least yeah. for that little bit of time that they were together, you know? Yeah, well, I, you know, what I liked about that episode was I think that it it both scared her because she, you know, again, like she felt as though she did have a certain pride about what she had, like almost to the point where she felt that she was better than the people who didn't. I mean, it was almost like, uh, um, you know, on the hierarchy, she didn't feel, not that I, you know, again, this is the hierarchy in her mind, not that I feel that that is how <laughs> is how things should be but she's looking at it that in that way uh because she even says to the movie star oh i've got my own house like oh i don't i know i most people i know like are outside and well, i you know maybe i slept outside once or twice but i've got you know again she 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 constantly goes on about the house um because she feels that at least puts her above uh a lot of the people that she knows and she works with. But I think that that scene that also scared her because she saw these older prostitutes, even the, the woman she gets into a fight with earlier. Uh, and she's worried that, you know, she may be too old to suddenly provide for herself uh, as a mm -hmm. prostitute. She mentions her and, and uh, later on to Oscar that her and Wanda have this plan to start like a different business, like a newsstand, you know, like they're yep. trying to think of what they're going to do when they get old. Um, and yeah, that scene. Yeah, you're right. Cause I think, you know, he offers her a car, car ride and she opens up to him more. That's when we find out that her real name is Maria. And she yeah. says, you know, she says, Oh, my parents died when I was, um, when I was much younger. Um, and then, you know, it's, you, you, you almost wanted the guy to do something for her, but like, you know, like what, 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 what could he, you know, the most he could do is give her a car ride or, you know, maybe some food or something, but I, I, you know, they have this somewhat awkward exchange. And I think, again, it's like, is, is, is he a savior is, it, but then that's what else, that's it. Right. I mean, there's nothing, yeah. you know, what, what else could he really do other than give her, you know, some food. But I think it, it was at least um, hopeful in the sense that she met someone like that. And the fact that mm -hmm. she could be more of herself. I mean, a lot of that, uh, um, the behavior we see with her friends where she's trying to, you know, where she was dancing and she's more joyous and was uh, um, beneath all that is the pain. And with that guy, she, she opened that up. Um, yes. And then of course, and then of course later she opens it up because the hypnotist kind of forces that out. <laughs> yeah. And, and I know. think, I think that episode with that man who, you know, who gave her the ride was, I think it gave some nice balance to the film and, and in a way that if I agree, all yeah. you showed was just going from one place of abuse to another place of abuse, everybody's abusing you. Yeah, too much. You know, yeah. To sort of, you know, offer a little bit of hope, you know, yes, mm -hmm. there's a lot of abuse, he's being abused, all these places, but there's, there's a couple of people she meets along the way that are genuinely good people and yeah and that could be something that you know is part of the hope that she might feel you know at the end uh at, you know at the very end which is um a pretty stunning ending uh, um ending you know i thought oh yeah um in terms of uh you know to, to i guess just considering what you know happened and i'm sorry this is going to spoilers here i guess we're spoiling no yeah we're all Christmas spoilers is, here yeah it's a 70 <laughs> year old movie so i guess yeah it's all good <laughs> but but i mean that was so incredibly you know beautiful the ending in terms of you know just the people surrounding her and the dancing and the procession oh yeah and, yeah and um the, just a tear coming down her eye and just that bit of glimmer of hope i mean the devastation of everything that she just lost but just that hope and i think part of that hope you know could have been fueled by the fact that hey there are some good people along the way there is some goodness and light in the world mm -hmm. uh, even in the midst of all of this you know wickedness and people taking advantage of you there are good people um you know so just uh, hopefully she had you know has some hope and hopefully uh, not only hope but maybe a little bit of wisdom as well you know to not to, to know who to trust who not to trust um, so exactly you know I, I think the I really believe the ending sort of gives 
you hope that that uh, things are going to be okay for you know for um, for uh, Kabidia or Maria. Um, yeah, yeah, well, which is has... a little bit of happier thing than than La Strada, where of course yes, Delsamina, of course, wasn't yeah. happy. It, that was so sad. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, you that, know. But at least that... for Kabidia, Maria, there's there's hope that you know what she could have a better life. You know. Yeah, yeah. While, while at the while at the same time, because uh, I believe Fellini even said, you know, it's like you you worry about a character like that, right? Because it's it's uh um it's hopeful, but it's still like it's worrisome, you know, because you feel as yeah. though um this can all happen again, and that you know next time someone will drown her, you know, or push her off that cliff, yeah. um, you know, because what what's interesting about when now she meets Oscar. Uh, as mm -hmm. we saw, you know, she gets, she goes to this show, this magician hypnotizes her and she opens up uh, about, you know, wanting, wanting love, the scenario of dancing Pouring with this her heart out, heart yeah. in, and she says, mm -hmm. do you really love me? Do you? So, you know, I, I felt so bad for, she was even waiting for everyone to leave before she even went outside. Cause everyone was there. Of course, like we saw with other characters, you know, bully her, tease her, mock her, make a joke out of her. Uh, and there, there it was in front of this entire audience. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, 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 you know, he, it was a really uh, great performance because he seemed like genuinely, like he really had me, like he seemed oh, yeah. like a genuinely nice. See the name of this uh, actor. Uh, man, uh, I believe. Uh, Francois Perrier. Yeah. Oscar D'Onofrio. Yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah. Uh, he was excellent. And. Um, he was. Yeah. Cause I, you know. I, I I felt that he was really really genuine, but it, but it, the whole thing that happens with him is is very much mirrors what happens to Giorgio because you know she she also doesn't know this guy for very long, and then he proposes to her, right? And it's and again yeah. she takes out all her money, she goes all in, she even sells her house, uh, and then sure enough, as soon as she goes and shows him, look at this money I took out. He, he's wearing sunglasses and he just looks off to the side and that's where you're like, Oh, uh Oh. Um, and then of course it, going into that forest, going up on the hill and then that, that great close up of just his eyes. And then, yes. you know, you know, and again, that, that incredible, that performance was just so, you know, that's a scene I'll never forget is when she basically begs him to like kill her just because she can't take this, you yeah. know, emotional, emotional abuse anymore. And thank God he didn't. I mean, thank, you know, yeah. thank God he only took the money. I mean, that's like one of the worst things you could do, anyways. But he he did, he doesn't kill her, and he and he runs off. And you know, I always had remembered that ending as her, or I, again, this is just what I had thought I had saw was that that was her going back to her friends. But it actually <laughs> isn't. She doesn't know. They're just like street people like her. So, and yeah. of course, she smiles and and you know the the tears. So, um you know, you, she, she's going to go back home. And as you said, it is optimistic. It's like, you know, yeah, I mean, perhaps, no I mean, there's hope trying, that maybe you know? she, yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe she goes back to Wanda and they together, you know, maybe yeah. she, you know, you, you know, rebuilds and they do that business that they had, um, yeah. that they had dreamt of doing and both get out of that street lifestyle that they had been in and build a better life for themselves. And, um, Maybe yeah. at some point, you know, because I could, you know, because she's, you know, reassures Wanda, you will, you know, you'll get married as well. And, you know, yeah. maybe they, you know, I, I like to think that they, you know, uh, found happiness, built their business together, found good men that treated them right and, you know, had a life, had children and grandchildren and died an old and happy life, you know? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the way I would I, I would love to see Kabiria's life. Uh, yeah, or no, imagine too. her life ending. You know, <laughs> me too. Because you're right. I mean, she did have she had friends, right? Like like that when she leaves, Wanda is like crying. Like like they she did have people. Oh yeah, who loved her. And loved as her. you said, it wasn't yeah. just scene after scene that is just like we're bad, 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 bad. Like there are these the episode of the the man feeding the homeless and and just the the sense of camaraderie amongst the the street characters uh so oh, yeah. you know she certainly had things going for her i actually just read yesterday apparently that scene with the the man feeding the homeless when i'm sure you you probably uh, i'm not sure if you read this but that was that was deleted at the time because they oh. were they were concerned 
that people would then think that that Rome didn't feed the homeless. Oh, <laughs> so they're they had, I'm like, oh, you know, give me a break. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So they so they cut it. And uh, I, I, I'm not sure exactly when that that scene was put back. Actually, no, uh, I read that he even quite a few years later, he had begged. He had he was obviously still, still thinking about the film and he begged uh, Dino, De Laurent, D, Dino De Laurentiis, the producer, to put it back in. So, of course, oh, good, now good. that's that's what we see. But, um, yeah, it seems I'm glad silly. I'm glad they didn't Orson Welles him. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, like with Magnificent RKO Magnificent. and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. It's, uh, um, it's, it's so, it's so, so good. Uh, you know, I know that, uh, Pasolini, uh, he didn't write the screenplay, but he contributed some of the dialogue because he knew a lot of these, these people. Uh, and, you know, you look at his films, particularly. Yeah, I saw him films. in the credits. Piero de pa yeah. uh, uh, Pasolini, he did a solo, right? I have not so seen yeah. that one. And I think Tio Rema. Te yeah. Tio Rema. Okay. Tio Rema. Yeah, those his, are films his... I have not seen yet. Okay. Have you seen his early ones like Acatone or Mama Roma? Because they're also about street. I haven't explored uh, Pasolini's okay. work yet. Uh, I look forward to it. In fact, I. I'm sort of tempted to check out Teorema. It has Terrence Stamp in it, who's yeah. just a brilliant actor. So I heard he was really good in that. Oh yeah. I um, yeah. I might I might saunter over to Barnes and Noble and swipe that up before Sunday. Oh yeah. Well he's <laughs> while the sale is still on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Teorema is not my favorite, but he his some okay. of his films are brilliant, particularly his early ones, Akaton. If you like uh Knights of Cabiria, Mama Roma, and uh, Akatone are are okay. phenomenal. Akatone is not on Criterion, but uh, Mama Roma is. Mama um, Roma, okay. And uh, yeah, because that's also about a a, a, pros a prostitute uh, as well. But yeah, you 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 know from from knowing his his films, quite a few of his films, uh, you I I could feel him in this because there is that that the, uh -huh. the roughness of it is very much I I feel. Uh, comes from him. Not that Fellini didn't shy away from roughness in his films as well, uh, particularly his early ones. But this one just has that extra sort of Pasolini quality about it. So, yeah, oh, okay. no, he he worked on this one um, as well. So, no, it's a it's a fantastic fantastic film. Are there any uh, interesting featurettes on the Blu-ray and on this one in particular? I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it. <laughs> Yeah, um, on this particular disc, there's a, there's um, one feature on there that I forget the name of it, but it has it. They splice together several interviews with Juliet, uh, with uh, uh, Julieta uh, Massina, and it's several interviews over the course of years. And she just talks a lot about her background and kind of where she comes oh. from. Because you know, I'm, I'm you know her performances in those two films in particular just have just blown me away you know yeah. and yeah and it's just so interesting to sort of learn a little bit more about okay where does she come from and you know her background growing up in rome she lived with one of her aunts you know for a while who was widowed and and that got her introduced to theater she started her work in you know radios uh plays that were written by federico fellini who then right. they got married and uh, 1943 and a decade later, you know, got success with La Strada and then Knights of Cabiria and, you know, winning, you know, uh, best feature, best foreign film, the, uh, you know, Oscar for best foreign film, you know, uh, consecutively with La Strada and Knights of Cabiria. So you learn a lot about, you know, about her background and her what she put into her performances, uh, which I just thought were stunning in those films, and that those performances were a lot of her, and and the fact that you know of of the characters she's played, Kabiria was the one that that mirrored you know her true self the most, and uh, so I just thought that was fascinating. There's another interview uh, with Fellini, uh, with him talking about his filmmaking process and. Um, just just his perspective. I always love hearing from directors. You yeah, know, and, me too. Uh, one of the things that, and I and I just I I am surface Fellini. I, I need to go deeper into his filmography and really learning more about him as a filmmaker. Uh, but the more I learn, the more fascinated I am. But one of the things that he talked about was 
because a lot of his work is very expressive. You know, yeah. you sort of see this uh, Italian neorealism. You see these types of films in his early work. And then his films get to be more, I guess, flamboyant and out yeah, there, surrealist. like satiricon, yeah. surreal, yeah. crazy, you know, uh, <laughs> which is interesting, you know. Um, and but a lot of his films have a an element of that carnival, you know, yes. aspect to them. You know, yeah. whether it's armor cord, eight and a half, you see all these different um, scenes where you see carnival players at play, and uh, which I find interesting. Um, and he said that if he would, if, if he did not become a film director, that he probably would have been a, you know, a carnival, uh, director, you know, uh, and you sort of get a sense, you know, looking at his films, like, yeah, I can definitely see can that. See that that's probably what he would, would do. That would, you know, be in his wheelhouse, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so he took that, that passion and put it into a cinematic and, and, and makes it a component of his cinematic work, which I thought was interesting. So, but yeah, yeah a lot of great features, uh, you know, on that Kabiria disc, uh, where you know they talk about Kabiria and La and La Strada because those films are so uh, nicely connected. Yes, and they just yeah. give you a couple of really interesting, different, contrasting performances from the same amazing actress. You know. Uh, with, you know, Jelsamina being more reserved and, you know, submissive, you know, to, the, you know, Zampano, who's, you know, brilliantly played by Anthony Quinn, but uh, just a devastating, you know, character and story there to this more strong-willed, you know, character, yeah. um, you know, Kabiria, and they're just, just wonderful, fascinating women played by the same yes. you know, actress. The wife yeah. of Federico Fellini. So, yeah, the, I, I mean, the more I learn about them, the more I want to learn because they they are were a powerhouse couple, absolutely um, in in cinema. Yeah. And just seeing the footage of them, you know, at the Cannes Film Festival in the nineteen fifties, and going going to the award shows, and it, it it had to be a really fascinating time, you know, when they were you know at that oh, height definitely. of acclaim um, at that time. So. Definitely. Yeah, no, definitely. I'll have to get that box set one day soon. Can you tell us uh, what your YouTube channel is about? Oh, well, you know, our channel is uh, 20th and 21st Movies. Uh, we are about all things cinema. Uh, we cover a lot of, of coverage of the Criterion Collection, you know, films, of course. Right now, we're, of course, in the middle of the July Barnes & Noble sale as of the time that this is you know being recorded. But, you know, I, I told people that I, I've been watching Criterion films since I think 2013 is when I first got into the Criterion collection and it has just been a fascinating journey, uh, just, you know, covering, you know, di different areas of cinema, learning about new directors, and really just film discovery. And uh, one of the things that I love about uh, doing this, uh, you know, on YouTube, on this platform is, is just hearing the different comments in the community. So if mm. I do a review of a film and, you know, there's so much about the film that I, I still don't know, you know, even though I'm sitting here reviewing it, sharing my thoughts on it, my impressions, but then I'm getting comments from people that's, you know, shedding light on different areas that I totally missed or, you know, or, uh, or have you heard of this director or have you heard of this film that that director made? no, I haven't heard of that film or I haven't heard of that director, you know, <laughs> and it's just a, not an opportunity to, you know, to discover a new film, a new director. And I have discovered so many, you know, films just from the community, uh, people, you know, recommending, you know, titles. And so I feel like, you know, Criteria is definitely open, you know, a window to the world in terms of cinema, which is uh, fascinating. I do a, a series on the channel called Taste Director Series. And, um, of course, upcoming, we're going to have an episode on, uh, you know, where we turn the spotlight on a particular director. So uh, last month we did Taste of Clint Eastwood films. This month we're going to be doing a Taste of Osman Sembin, uh, the father of African cinema. So oh, fantastic. definitely looking forward to doing that at some point. And as I think about it, I think one of these days I need to do a Taste of a uh, Yes, Federico Fellini. Films. So, <laughs> and in each of those episodes, I you know I'll choose like three to four films to focus on, um, and so I got to figure out which 
films, I, I would imagine La Strada and Nice and Cabiria would, would, would yeah. be two of them. And then just a matter of what would be the other two. So I got to right. figure that out. <laughs> right. Fantastic. And where is the best place for people to follow you on social media and your YouTube yeah, channel? Yeah. So of course at uh, 20th and 21st movies and also at 20th and 21st, 20th and 21st on Instagram as well. And also on Twitter at 20th and 21st. And I also am on Letterboxd as well at uh, 20th and 21st. So yeah, Great. those are some places to reach me, but I really do appreciate you having me, Robert. And it's just no, my a pleasure. conversation. You know, it really has. Amazing film and director. No, it really has. No, thanks again for taking the time to come out. Uh, and yeah, no, this has been a great chat. So I hope that you can come again sometime soon. Thanks so much. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching and or listening. If you are currently listening to this on the audio version of my YouTube channel and you've run out of episodes to listen to, head over to the YouTube channel where every single episode that I have ever recorded can be found at youtube.com slash Robert Bellissimo at the movies. I also want to thank all of my members on Patreon. If you're interested in becoming a member of my Patreon, head over to the link patreon.com slash Robert Bellissimo at the movies for full details. Patreon is bonus content that I create month in and month out. And it is based on polls that I put out at the beginning of every single month, which as a member, you will have access to vote on. Just a few bucks a month goes a long way and you'll really, really help the film podcast keep going here on YouTube. So head over to the link for full details. You can also leave a donation to the YouTube channel directly. Uh, if you look underneath the video box here and hit the like, comment, dislike button, there will be a button there that says thanks. Click on the thanks tab there. And from there, if you wish, you can leave a donation. And lastly, if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing by pressing the Robert Bellissimo at the Movies logo. It is absolutely free to do so. You will see it floating above my head in the top left corner to your top left in just a second. Just click on that and then click the bell in order to get a notification every time I release one of my new episodes or when I go live. Thank you so much, everyone. I will see you in the next episode.